Hello everyone. First of all, I want to appreciate all of your support for this YouTube channel. It has grown so much during the pandemic and after that, and I'm hoping to be able to help more students across the world to ace their exams. Today, I'm going to show you how to balance redox reactions using a fast and easy method, both in acidic and alkaline conditions. So let's get started. We will start with an example of redox reaction in acidic condition. The first step is to balance the atoms that are not hydrogen and oxygen. In this case, manganese and bismuth are both balanced already. The second step is to assign the oxidation states of the species that undergo oxidation and reduction. Since oxygen doesn't undergo changes, I'm not writing its oxidation state. Manganese is oxidized from plus 2 to plus 7, whereas bismuth gets reduced from plus 5 to plus 3. The third step is to calculate the number of electrons being transferred. Manganese going from oxidation state of plus 2 to plus 7 must have lost 5 electrons, and bismuth gains 2 electrons. The fourth step is to make sure that the number of electrons lost equals the number of electrons gained. We can do this by finding the lowest common multiples of the two electron numbers. In this case, we multiply 5 electrons by 2 and multiply 2 electrons by 5. Now multiply the coefficients of manganese by 2 and bismuth by 5. Let's see what we have so far. The fifth step is to balance the charges on either side of the equation by adding hydrogen ions. On the left hand side, we have plus 4 because manganese ion carries a 2 plus charge and there are 2 of them. So 2 times 2 plus is plus 4 and minus 5 from the 5 BiO3 minus ions, which equals to negative 1. On the right hand side, we have minus 2 and plus 15, giving a total of plus 13. This means we need to add 14 hydrogen ions on the left hand side to equalize the charges on both sides which is plus 13. The sixth step is to balance the hydrogen by adding water. On the left hand side, we have 14 hydrogen and on the right hand side, we have zero. So we need seven water molecules as the final touch. Let's do another example, still in acidic condition. You can do this problem together with me, just pause the video when necessary. And let's start by balancing the manganese and sulfur atoms first. Next, assign the oxidation states of the species that undergo reduction and oxidation. Manganese is plus 7 to plus 2 whereas sulfur is an average of plus 2 to an average of plus 2.5. This time, we have a total of 4 sulfur atoms on either side. So let's write the oxidation states 3 more times. Next, account for the electrons being lost and gained and find the lowest common multiple of the two numbers. For magnesium, the oxidation number goes from plus 7 to plus 2, so that is a gain of 5 electrons. For sulfur, the total oxidation number on the left hand side is plus 8, and total on the right hand side is plus 10, so that is a loss of 2 electrons for sulfur. So now we just cross multiply these numbers. And then multiply the coefficients accordingly. 
Next, calculate the total charge on either sides. On the left hand side, we have a total of negative 22. On the right hand side, we have a total of negative 6. And then, balance the charges by adding hydrogen ions. We need 16 hydrogen ions on the left hand side, so that 16 minus 22 equals negative 6. Lastly, balance the hydrogen by adding water molecules. On the left hand side, we now have 16 hydrogen. On the right hand side, we need 16 hydrogen by adding 8 water molecules. Now let's take a look at an example of redox reaction in alkaline condition. I'm going to use the same species as in our first example. The first step is to balance the atoms that are not hydrogen and oxygen. In this case, manganese and bismuth are both balanced already. The second step is to assign the oxidation states of the species that undergo oxidation and reduction. The third step is to calculate the number of electrons being transferred. Manganese loses 5 electrons and bismuth gains 2 electrons. The fourth step is to make sure that the number of electrons lost equals the number of electrons gained. In this case, we cross multiply the two numbers. Now multiply the coefficient of manganese by 2 and bismuth by 5. So far, all the steps are identical to balancing redox reactions in acidic conditions. Now this is where it gets a bit different. The fifth step is to balance the charges on either side of the equation by adding hydroxide ions instead of hydrogen ions. On the left hand side, we have plus 4 and minus 5 which equals to negative 1. On the right hand side, we have a total of positive 13. This means we need 14 hydroxide ions on the right hand side to equalize the charges on both sides, which is negative 1. The sixth step is to balance the hydrogen by adding water. On the left hand side, we have 0 hydrogen and on the right hand side, we have 14 hydrogen. So we need 7 water molecules on the left hand side to balance the equation. Let's go through this problem together. Balance the chlorine first. Next, assign the oxidation states of the species that undergo reduction and oxidation. You can see that the chlorine atom in chlorine 4 oxide is both oxidized and reduced. So this is an example of a disproportionation reaction where the same species undergo both reduction and oxidation. Next, account for the number of electrons being transferred. So one chlorine is reduced from plus 4 to plus 3. And another is oxidized from plus 4 to plus 5. This time the number of electrons are already the same. Next, calculate the total charges on either sides. On the left hand side we have zero charge and on the right hand side we have negative 2. To balance the charges we need to add two hydroxide ions on the left hand side and this makes the charges on either side to be negative 2. Lastly, we have two hydrogen on the left so we balance the hydrogen by adding one water molecule on the right. 
That's all for this video. I hope you find it useful. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.